Damn it! Scott heard his friend Will shout from the other room. Not again! Scott was lounging on the couch and reading a magazine when Will stormed into the room. That, that damn thief stole more of my things! Scott set the magazine down. You sure it's not just, uh, raccoons or something? Scott asked. Sure of it, Will replied. Raccoons would have taken food or something. This guy just, this guy just took some bottles of alcohol and other things that I don't think any raccoon would want. Scott and Will were on a hunting trip in the forest. They were staying in a log cabin up near some mountains. Recently, items have been going missing. Bottles of wine or beer, books, sometimes even the pelt of the animal they just killed. Scott wondered where this thief had come from. There wasn't another log cabin for miles around, and they haven't found or heard of anyone else camping nearby. But nonetheless, Will was determined to get revenge. I'm gonna get him, Will shouted. This guy's gonna pay! He sat down next to Scott and opened a can of beer. I'll wait all night if I have to. Scott picked up his magazine and resumed reading it. You do what you want. I prefer to get my sleep. Scott walked out of his room in the morning to see Will sitting on the couch holding his shotgun. I almost had him, he shouted. He was out back and he got away. Scott yawned and sat down next to his friend. Well, better luck next time, I suppose. Yeah, next time. Scott stared at the item on the table. You're really going to try and catch him with a foothold trap. He picked up the trap and inspected its tightly closed jaws. I've got six of them. I'll set them up all around in a mile radius and I'll catch that no good thief. Will picked up another foothold trap from beside the couch proudly. I won't mark where they are so he doesn't know, but I'll show you so you don't step on them. Thanks. Scott put the trap back on the table. It was a medium sized one. It certainly wouldn't be strong enough to break a man's bone in most circumstances, but it might break the skin or leave a bruise. So, what are you going to do if you catch him? Scott asked. Will paused for a moment before replying. I don't know, but I'll make sure it's clear to him that if he ever does it again, then I'll use this. Will held up his shotgun proudly. I'm going to set them up later today. A few days had passed after Will set up the traps. So far, only a few animals have been captured. Will was sitting on the couch and trying to think of new ways to catch the thief. Even with the traps around, items were still going missing. Scott opened the front door and walked in, holding his rifle and something else. Is this your thief? He shouted and put something bloody on the table. Will rushed up to the table in excitement, but then was quickly disappointed. Don't do that, you know I'm serious about this, Scott laughed. The only thing you're catching in those traps is animals, no humans. He picked up the item that he had and put it on the table. It was a rabbit that just got caught in the trap and died. Hell, maybe it is the rabbits, maybe they're, they're having parties with all the beer they steal. Scott went into another room to store the carcass of the animal. The next morning, Scott was out checking the traps. The first trap had nothing. The second one had gone off but hadn't caught anything. The third looked like it was deliberately set off. The fourth had no luck either. Scott was heading towards a spot with the fifth trap when he heard rustling. It was definitely made by a living creature and definitely larger than a rabbit. He pointed the shotgun he had in front of him and approached carefully. Getting closer, he could tell it was a human. Nani. Scott couldn't understand what he was saying, but he knew that this was the culprit. He stepped out around a tree to see the thief caught in the trap by his right leg. The thief had his back to him so Scott could only see what he was wearing. Black pants, a black hoodie, and white gloves. Scott knew this was the one who was stealing their things, but he couldn't help but feel sorry for him. He was trying to pry open the jaws, but he couldn't get them open. Hey, uh, wait, l let me help. Scott started to walk towards him to help, but the man held up his hand to stop him. He continued to try to get the trap off. Hey, I I'm sorry for putting the trap here, but let me help, Scott said, but yet again was cut off. Oi, Mateo! Scott stopped and watched him continue to try to get the trap off. 
He continued to try to pry it open and then gave up on that and tried another method. He lifted his left foot and stepped on a lever on the side of the jaws, pushing down hard. The jaws loosened and he slipped his wounded right foot out of it. <laughs> the man then turned around and faced Scott. Scott's heart skipped a beat when he got a full glimpse of what the man was wearing. The man also had on a black and white striped scarf and an odd looking mask. The mask was half black and half white. The black side was blank, but the white side had on it the shape of a glaring black eye and an indifferent looking mouth. Suddenly, that face seemed to vanish, and on the other side, the black side of the mask, a happy mouth and an eye appeared. <laughs> Scott was frozen in place, staring at that odd mask. The thief shook his injured foot a bit and flexed his hands. A dark black claw appeared out of each finger and then retracted back like a cat's claw. Scott determined that this was no human. He had no idea what it was, some kind of demon or monster. It turned back to him. Then it turned around and walked away with a limp. Scott just stared. A few minutes after it left, he regained mobility. He realized that he had dropped his gun in shock. Scott picked it up and slowly turned around to leave, forgetting to check the last trap. He didn't believe in demons, nor did he believe in ghosts or monsters, and he didn't really want to start today. He decided that nothing had happened and that in the boredom of checking empty traps, his mind had created something interesting. The next morning, Scott was sitting at the table with a cup of coffee. He felt terrible and had a horrible headache. What was worse is that he kept feeling like he was being watched. In the corners of his eyes, he always thought he saw a face. That, that masked face with a joyful grin. Whenever he turned to look at it, it went away or was replaced by something else. Again? Will stomped into the room. The thief has stole more things! What? What thief? There's no thief! I didn't run into him! Scott shouted. Will stared at him. What? Never mind. Scott took another sip of coffee. Just, just ignore what I said. Well, he stole more things. This time, I found some of the larger foot traps missing along with the other shit. Will went to get himself some coffee and Scott froze. He saw that the door to the next room was open. And someone was in there. He saw it, walking around, inspecting things and looking around. It picked up a magazine and flipped through it. And that's when it noticed him. It looked up at him and that half-smiled face seemed to laugh at him. No. What are you doing here? You're not real. Huh? Will turned around and Scott looked at him. Uh, is there someone there? Will walked over and opened the door to the next room fully, revealing no one. Just an empty room. No, no, it was, it was nothing. Just, uh, just thinking about something, Scott said, and tried to look as well adjusted as possible, even though he felt as if his mind was going crazy. He tried to calm himself by looking out the window at the trees and the birds flying by. Looking at nature calmed him for a while until he noticed something looking back. He saw it again. It was sitting in a tree and watching him. It was holding a bottle. Probably one that it had stolen and was staring at him. One leg on the tree branch it was on and one leg hanging down. It looked very comfortable as if it was watching television. It seemed to laugh again, and then it held up a large foothold trap, larger than the one they'd set. Scott covered his face and told himself that it wasn't there. It was just his imagination. And when he looked back up, it was gone. He sighed a sigh of relief, telling himself that he was right, and it was all just his imagination. 
Later, Willow went out to check the traps again. Scott was alone in the cabin. He felt that there was someone else there too, but he kept telling himself that he was just a little paranoid. He was sitting on the bed in his room and looking at the white-tailed buck's head that was mounted on the opposite wall. He was looking at the deer's large antlers when he noticed that the door to the next closet was ajar. Scott got up to inspect it. He saw something shining slightly inside it when the light hit it. But the shine seemed familiar and he didn't want to touch it. He left the room and came back holding a rake to use to go get it because he didn't want to touch it himself. Scott eyed the spot where he presumed the object was and poked it with the end of the rake. There was a loud clang of metal setting off and the end of the rake broke off. He crawled away from the closet. Scott thought it was a demon, but after a few minutes of staring at the closet with no movement, he decided to go investigate. He opened up the closet and used the remaining parts of the rake to pull out the object. It was large foothold trap. The sharp jaws had been set off by the rake and were tightly gripping the broken end of the wooden handle. Scott jumped. It was that voice. It was in the house too, watching him. It was a few days after Scott had found the set foothold trap in the closet. He still saw it everywhere, that demon. Will never seemed to notice it though. It was quiet and stealthy. Even the previous day, it had just strolled into the room, silently. Will was reading something at the table, and it just walked right behind him, and then out the other door. Scott was speechless each time he saw it. He still didn't want to believe. He didn't want to tell Will. Will would just think he's crazy. Scott could even hear it sometimes, laughing that laugh. And yet, he was the only one who seemed to notice how odd it was. Will just dismissed it as an animal outside. It seemed to be stealing less though, which was a good thing. The next day, Will was out hunting. Scott didn't go with him because whenever he went out into the woods, he always saw that demon watching him from a tree and smiling. Scott was just sitting on the couch and thinking to himself when he heard a door close. He stood up and walked over to see the door to the next room open slowly, and then stop when it was about three inches open. He walked over and opened the door and saw the door to the next room open a little slowly in the same fashion. In this room, there was a dead rabbit that had been killed by a trap. He walked towards the door and opened it. He saw that the rabbit was gone. The only evidence that showed that it had previously been there was a blood stain. The door behind Scott closed, and he turned around to open it, but when he exited, he saw that the door to his room was open, and then it slammed shut. Scott ran towards the door and burst into the room, and then he screamed. Scott was looking at the large, white-tailed buck head mounted on the other wall. It had been tampered with. A lot. The fake eyes had been pulled out, and blood had been poured into the sockets. Its mouth was smeared in blood, and a large smile had been shaped onto its cheekbones with blood. The carcass of the rabbit was on the floor underneath the deer head. It was slashed open. Underneath the deer head on the wall, written in blood, was... Oh my god, how good is she the guy? The smell was awful. Scott turned around to leave, and saw that the door had been shut behind him. Scott heard laughter from behind the door. He tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. The laughter continued, sounding more deranged by each second, and finally he heard it fade away. Then he opened the door, but the moment he stepped outside, he heard it again, and he looked towards the front door, and there he saw it. It was leaning against the front door and laughing at him. Scott grabbed his shotgun and ran towards it. He was fed up with this. The demon opened the door and stepped outside. Scott ran up to it and it slammed the door in his face, laughing. Scott grew angrier and opened the door to see it running into the woods. He chased it and pretty soon they were near the spot where the second trap was set. Scott tripped and fell right on the spot where the trap was previously set. 
Scott realized mid-fall where he was and cringed, ready to feel the trap snap him up. But it didn't. He got up, confused, and when he looked down, he saw the trap was gone. He let out a sigh of relief. Scott looked up and saw the demon standing before him and laughing. He got up and resumed the chase. It turned and ran. Pretty soon he lost sight of it, but he continued anyway. There was a small clearing in a tree a few meters away. It was standing underneath the tree, arms crossed and leaning against the trunk. It was still smiling, but the smile was no longer on the black side of the mask. It was now on the white side. It stared at him, laughing in a different fashion. Instead of playful, this time it seemed malicious. Scott ran towards it, shotgun pointed forward, when something snapped his foot and he fell, dropping the gun. It laughed at him. Pain shot up Scott's leg and he looked to see what he had stepped in. A foothold trap. The one that was formerly set elsewhere. It laughed, and Scott saw that he had a clear shot. He reached forward to grab his gun, but the demon stepped forward and picked it up. Play the game like I did. Scott stared in disbelief. You can speak English? Yada yada. Of course I can. You idiot. I played the game correctly, and now it's your turn. I won fair and square. But can you? Hey! This isn't funny! Scott shouted and started trying to get the trap off of his leg. What are you? Get me out of this damn thing! He started trying to push down the levers on the side of the jaws. Meanwhile, the demon climbed up the tree and reclined on a branch. It reached up to the other branch and Scott saw that it had stored a few items that it had stolen up there. It grabbed a bottle of wine and a glass, still watching him. I like you. You actually play the game. Most humans I meet. But you're actually playing. I like that. It poured itself a glass of wine and watched him struggle out of the trap. Scott succeeded in pushing down the lever and freeing his leg. He got up slowly and glared at the demon. I played your game! Now play mine! He ran forward to grab his gun when something much larger caught his other leg. He screamed and fell down, his leg now bleeding heavily. Scott's leg had been caught in a large, toothed jaw foothold trap. This one was truly worthy for the name Bear Trap. He was frozen on the ground, pain coursing through his entire body. <laughs> you made it to level two! <laughs> the demon laughed hysterically and then drank some more wine, watching Scott bleed out. As Scott lied there dying, he could see around him many more foothold traps set. Most of them were the small ones they had set, and some were ones that were stolen from the cabin. He saw two more large bear traps set near him. Scott tried weakly to reach down and free his leg, even though he knew it was hopeless. He only succeeded in getting his arms stuck in a smaller trap. Scott saw blood gushing from his leg, and the last thing he heard was that demon laughing. He lost the game. <laughs> Will was getting worried. It was dark, and when he arrived back at his cabin, Scott was gone. He had noticed Scott acting strangely lately and was worried. Will had found a large mess in his room and wondered what had brought his friend to do such a thing. Will decided to go out and investigate, even though it was dark. He was walking along when he heard something in the distance. It sounded like mad laughter. He ran towards the sound and saw someone in a tree. And then he saw Scott lying on the ground. On his forehead was carved. She buys she got. The one in the tree grew hysterical. <laughs> Player two has arrived. It shouted and let out an insane laugh. Will ran forward to get Scott, and then he saw Scott's leg was caught in the large bear trap, and there were other traps scattered all around. He realized too late, his foot got trapped in a smaller trap, and he fell face first into a large bear trap. The demon continued laughing. 
They both lost. Game over. <laughs> Game over.